Ladies and gentlemen, Fei Chang Ni Hao. I just got home from my Toastmasters competition and I am happy to announce that I won something. Yeah, here it is. Today, what I want is to show you a speech that I did uh, for a Toastmasters competition about learning Chinese. Yeah, the speech is called La Wai Language Learning The Three Stages of. And uh, yeah, I hope you like it. Matilda von Hilbert. The three stages of Lao Wai language learning. The three stages of Lao Wai language learning. Matilda von Hilbert. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you a secret. Let me tell you a secret. Let me tell you a secret. I am a foreigner in China. <laughs> Why go run? Now why? That means that I have to learn Chinese, not as my first or second language, but as yet another language that is not like any other language that I know. Hmm. Let me explain this to you and tell you today about the three stages of La Wai language learning. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Beginning with stage one, it's called the overconfident face. <coughs> yes. Because as the Lao Wai first enters China, he or she is usually welcomed and praised. All you have to do is say, Ni hao. Ni hao. <laughs> <laughs> and then people will respond by saying, Oh, your Chinese is so good! <laughs> Confident Lao Wai once. I came to Shanghai last year knowing just Yi Din Din Chinese. <laughs> but then soon I found that real life situations were not as on my CD at home. People didn't speak with a Beijing accent here. <laughs> and people speak when they want, not when you press the button. <laughs> to learn more and I willfully entered stage two, the struggle phase. Yes, I joined a language course at a language school called Go East and they are amazing, amazing people. They're not paying me to tell you this. <laughs> In fact, I am paying them a lot of money. <laughs> When you pay a lot of money, you have to go. That's how all the expensive gym memberships work, too. <laughs> so I go, and in my class, I'm super happy because the teachers are great and encouraging, and I feel confident and proud of my Chinese abilities. But then I go outside into the wild world of elevators and taxi cabs and shops. And then when I'm in the real world, and I ask a shopkeeper how much money something is, and the answer is more than just the number, I get really confused. <laughs> or I go into a taxi, and the average shifu in Shanghai loves the Lao Wai lady who speaks some Chinese. <laughs> so they get excited and start telling me their whole life story. <laughs> <laughs> and then my face goes blank. <laughs> what can a Lao Wai do? Well, many Lao Wai employ this strategy. They say the three magic words, ting bu dong. <laughs> yeah. In fact, in Shanghai, it even has become a verb to ting bu dong it. <laughs> so, I am guilty of using this tactic, and it gets you out of many situations. Some people use it when they really don't understand, and others, they do it when they don't want to understand. So you can say ting bu dong and be done. The end. But it's also the end 
of your actual real life learning experience. And the end of the conversation, it's a conversation <coughs> killer. Yes. So what if that's not what you want? How do you get out of this phase that is called the struggle? How do you stop struggling? Ting Budong is not the answer. You'll stay there forever in stage two. But I wanted to move on. And actually, I'm very proud to tell you that stage three is one that I discovered all by myself. Stage three is called the singing phase. The what? Yeah, the singing phase. You heard me! The singing phase! Here is what you do. You get into the taxi, ta the taxi cab and you greet the shifu and you start talking about your life. My most conversations start similarly. I just say who I am, where I'm from. They all want to know. And how long I've been in Shanghai. And then yes, at some point the conversation rolls towards somewhere where I kind of don't get it at all. <laughs> and I'm very tempted to say Ting Budong. But if you say Ting Budong, the rest of your taxi trip will be really awkward and long. <laughs> it will be silent and the Shifu will think you are stupid. So how do you go from there? Well, what you do is you look at your driver. You smile. <laughs> and you sing. Yang <laughs> That's an old time favorite and it always works. In fact, last week I had bought a couch, a second hand couch, and I was in a truck. And in the back of the truck there was the couch, and I was in the front seat. Usually I'm not. So the Shifu was right next to me and he was very interested in my life. <laughs> so he was talking and talking and I didn't get what was going on, but I did not say Ting Budong. In fact, I looked at him, and I thought, am I, am I really going to do this? Yes. <laughs> Imagine the face of the taxi driver. <laughs> familiar territory to me because immediately the taxi driver wants to know do you have a boyfriend <laughs> <laughs> and I know exactly how to answer that question I say no but I do have two cats <laughs> <laughs> and we go from there and my in the real life language experience continues and my real life practice continues so ladies and gentlemen you have all been in this struggle phase before all learners are in the confidence phase at some point in their lives too. And we struggle. We struggle a lot. Not just people learning Chinese, people learning English, people learning French, Chinese, Japanese, doesn't matter. We struggle. But how do we get out of that situation? In the end, what we have to do is come up with something creative and not give up. Make it fun for yourselves. And sing. Singing is universal. Every human being on the planet can respond to it. Just be brave and sing it like you mean it. Thank you. Woo! Woo!